What on earth is going on? My hair is wild today. The season is far from over at Leeds United, and there is still plenty of uncertainty at Elland Road about absolutely everything, let's be honest. But this means there are also some big questions going round about transfers, and we may have had some answers from a football finance expert. But first, subscribe. Thank you. I'll be trying to keep up these videos on transfers and transfer news throughout the summer, so stick around. Anyway, Kieran Maguire has given a very, very big Leeds United transfer update, and it's one that I think could be a little bit of a difference maker for the club. He gave his views on Leeds United in a recent discussion, I think with Football Insider, and he covered the current situation, what's likely to go on with the transfer kitty, and I had a little bit of a dive into the sort of positions that we might need. So the current situation, admittedly, if you don't know everything that's going on with the club's finances, would look a little bit horrific. The club currently owes £73.6 million to other clubs in transfer fees to be paid over this summer. That seems like quite a lot on the face of it, because it's a lot of money, and it might seem like it's an insurmountable amount, but that isn't the case. The sales of Tyler Adams and Louis Sinistero have definitely cushioned that blow to the tune of about 40 million quid. And in addition to that, Maguire noted that Leeds United have got a lot of players out on loan this season, which could further cushion the blow of not being in the Premier League. Now, you need to think that we have the likes of Llorente, we have Christensen, we have Rocker, Harrison all out on loan still, Aronson as well, but we've got a lot of players out on loan, uh, that we can, in the summer, in theory, sell on to other clubs, or at the very least, loan out with a fee. This is going to be a little bit more income coming in, and although there is a £73 million gap sat there in terms of what we will need to pay off in the summer, that £33 million quid will, in part, be filled in by those loan players, in addition to probable outgoings, because he does also acknowledge the need to sell. The fact that Arna Slot is having a little bit of a sniff around Crescencio Somerville tells me that he might probably be on the way, no matter what league we're in. And it's quite interesting to look at the sort of PNS situation that we're into. There are maximum losses in the EFL of £13 million per season if the club stay down for too long, because that is calculated over a three-season period. If we're down here for one season... That's not the biggest of issues. However, we can also note that associated party transactions, yes, I've been reading into the EFL regulations, and yes, it's a boring document, can be incredibly helpful to Leeds United at this point. So, for example, an associated party transaction is when someone comes in and sponsors something related to the club when they are already associated with the side. So I've taken an example from our new good friend, Will Ferrell. Lead LUTV sponsored by Gary Sanchez Productions, or something weird like that. There are opportunities for the club to get sponsorships that they wouldn't have gotten before, get exposure that they wouldn't have gotten before, because, let's be honest, Will Ferrell brings with him the potential for big productions again, like the Amazon series that brought in a lot of cash. There's potential to do things that will help out the financial situation. And that means that we can talk a little bit more about the transfer kitty, the nice little war chest that we've got going into the summer, and Maguire also said that the 49ers are too big of a brand to not give the club appropriate levels of support. Now, appropriate levels of support might vary depending on your definitions, and we still need to fit within those EFL regulations, but that means that they will happily put money behind the side, and they will help us to go through this rebuild that we quite desperately need to do, because I had a look at the positions that we're in need of, and I'm going to go through them towards the end, and oh boy, there's more than I thought. There will still likely be sales to cover losses. As I mentioned, Crescencio Somerville, if we're in the championship, I can't see Willie Nonto wanting to stick around. Maybe Malier might push for a move or something like that, but there's a lot of potential movement out, which means that anything the 49ers want to invest can go into buying and loaning new players, which would be great. The sales of the current loan army could also be huge to that, because if we do sell Crescencio Somerville, all those sales essentially go into the transfer budget, and it all adds up to a pretty big squad rebuild, regardless of the division that we are in at the end of the season. So, I thought I'd have a little bit of a dive in and a talk about what Leeds United will need, and this is where, let me know in the comments down below what you think Leeds United will need. I've gone through, sort of in my head, position by position by position, and said, what is it that Leeds United properly require at the moment? And there's a fair whack. So let me know in the comments what you think, whether you agree, whether you disagree. But the first one I've gone for is a creative winger, because odds are we will lose one of Somerville and Nonto, maybe both, and losing both will be a pretty big issue that will need to be refilled. 
between them, they've got something like 25 goals in the league this season and a bunch more assists. So that's a lot of creativity that will need to be filled in. Another bit of creativity that we'll need is a good number 10. I don't believe that Jorginho Ruter will be sold this summer. Partially because it would go down as a profit and sustainability loss because of the fee that we had to pay for him in the first place. And partially because he just seems to be enjoying his football here. He seems to be enjoying his time. And whilst a move to like a Premier League side might see him in theory in a better position, in practice, there's no point to him just sitting on the bench for a while so I can see him sticking out. But we will need another number 10 anyway because when Ruter is tired, when he's injured, when he's a little bit run down... We're not really getting much from him at the moment, which is bad, I'd say. So being able to get not a replacement, but someone to maybe play alongside him if Ruter wants to go out wide. I've seen people discussing Sammy Schmodix because Blackburn are still stuck in the championship. They might demand a big fee, but if he wants a move, that would be a brilliant look for us. In addition to that, we'd need at least two solid centre-backs because if we don't get promoted, we're going to lose Joe Rodon. No matter what, Liam Cooper's probably going in the summer because there's been no discussion around renewing his contract. And Charlie Crosswell, I can't see wanting to stay here. So we will need two solid centre-backs, one for each side, arguably, and potentially a left-back if Junior Firpo does decide to move on because they'll have a single year left on his contract. I can't see us wanting to get rid of him for free the year after. So... That could also be basically essential for us if Junior Firpo decides to move on and we sell him, we'll need a left back quite badly. In addition to that, we will probably need a right back as well because Connor Roberts, I can't see making his move permanent if we stay in the championship, if we get promoted. I don't know if he's of the level to play in the Premier League. So there's a lot of questions around that. And in addition to that, I would say we probably need a high quality goalkeeper as well, not to replace Ilan Melier, but to challenge him because Everyone in the side will get better when they are training with people that are better. That just makes sense to me. And Dylan Melier has got a consistency issue at the moment. If we have someone that we can rely on to step in, sort of like a ramsdale Raya situation at Arsenal, that'd be spectacular because it means that we can sort of look after ourselves a little bit more. In addition to that, we also probably need a midfielder because the midfield looks a little bit weak at the moment and is fairly easily torn through by other sides when they know how to play against us. So... Another midfielder would add a little bit more to the depth, a little bit more quality, and give us a few more options in those positions that we didn't have when we were playing Archie Gray right back and Padu at centre back. Our next nearest option was Charlie Crew, who is 17 years old and hasn't played once for the senior side. But ultimately, all of this considered, I want to know what you think. I think we'll have a fairly reasonable transfer kitty going into the summer. We'll have a fairly reasonable transfer spend if we're able to sell the players that we need to sell. And I'm still feeling okay about the playoffs, but no matter what division we are in, it's good to know that odds are we'll be spending a decent amount of money to make sure that we are pushing forward next year. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like on it. Subscribe. That is always hugely appreciated and helps the channel to push on forwards. You could even become a channel member. All that revenue right now is going to Prostate Cancer UK and is making a big difference. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you later. My head's too warm, but the hair looks stupid. I've got decisions to make today, haven't I?